Hello and welcome to Basic Medical Sciences. If this is your first time here, please make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss any of our latest videos. In the previous video, we introduced the Picona Veride family and we also talked about the enterovirus genus. So, in this video, we are going to talk about the first virus which belongs to the enterovirus genus and the virus is called the poliovirus. Some general information about the poliovirus. Due to widespread vaccination measures and improved sanitation, poliomyelitis has been eradicated in most countries, but it is still endemic in Afghanistan, India, Pakistan, and some parts of Nigeria. The goal for eradication was actually 2005, but unfortunately that goal remains stubbornly elusive. Now, some microbiology of poliovirus. Firstly, you need to remember that poliovirus is a positive sense single-stranded RNA virus. And here I represented it with the sun. The poliovirus is naked. It is surrounded by 60 capsomeres arranged in a icosahedral symmetry. And each capsome is made up of four virion proteins, VP1, VP2, VP3, and VP4. Now let's talk about serotypes of the poliovirus. The poliovirus has three serotypes, poliovirus 1, poliovirus 2, and poliovirus 3. Poliovirus 3 was last detected in 2012, and it was then declared eradicated in 2019. The poliovirus 2 was last detected in 1999, and it was then declared eradicated in September of 2015. But unfortunately, poliovirus 1 still exists, and it caused most of the paralytic manifestations of poliomyelitis. Now, the poliovirus is the ability to infect cells in the pear species of the intestine. So this trophism explains the fecal oral mode of transmission. It also infects the motor neurons, and this explains the disease paralytic poliomyelitis. In rare cases, droplet transmission may occur during epidemics. Now, let's talk about the disease polio. Polio has three manifestations. Number one, mild illness. Number two, aseptic meningitis. And number three, paralytic poliomyelitis. Mild illness is an asymptomatic infection or a mild febrile viral illness. It is the most common form. And it especially okay in infants in developing countries where sanitation is poor. Moving on to aseptic meningitis. Fever and meningismus can develop as the poliovirus infects the meninges, but recovery is complete in one week. Paralytic poliomyelitis is the most feared manifestation of poliovirus infection. So let's dig deep. In paralytic poliomyelitis, the viral infection destroys the presynaptic motor neurons in the anterior horn of the spinal cord as well as in the postsynaptic neurons leaving the horn. The damage to the exiting motor neurons results in clinical manifestation of peripheral motor neuron deficits while presynaptic neuron damage causes central motor neuron deficits. The kind of paralysis is referred to as flaccid asymmetric paralysis. The paralytic disease can range from one leg or one arm to paraplegia, quadriplegia, and even respiratory muscle dysfunction, and mostly the diaphragm is affected, leading to death. Moving on. More serious events usually occur in 
patients older than 15 years. The affected extremities in early course will have painful muscle spasms. An asymmetric muscle paralysis will then follow. And ultimately, atrophy and loss of reflexes will occur. But bear in mind that there is no loss in sensitivity. Now let's look at the vaccines of polio. Polio has two vaccines, inactivated polio vaccine or IPV and oral polio vaccine or OPV. The inactivated polio vaccine, IPV, was developed by Jonas Salk and it contains the formalin killed viruses. It is injected subcutaneously and it provokes an IgG antibody response that will protect against the future viremia. But unfortunately, it does not provide intestinal immunity. Now looking at the oral polio vaccine or OPV, this was developed by Albert B. Sabin, so sometimes is known as the Sabin vaccine. It contains attenuated polio virus that has lost the ability to multiply in the central nervous system. It is taken orally and replicates and is shared in the feces in the normal fashion but does not cause paralytic polio. This vaccine induces both local secretory IgA antibodies in the intestine and also the humoral antibodies, meaning IgM and IgG. Okay, so this OPV has some advantages and disadvantages. So let's look at them. The first advantage of OPV is that the oral route and the full replication allows formation of both IgG in the blood and secretory IgA in the GI tract. Above that, the attenuated virus is spread to conducts, resulting in secondary infection and immunity in these individuals. The main disadvantage of OPV is the vaccine-associated paralytic poliomyelitis. This occurs because the vaccine can pick up the virulence and cause paralysis in the person taking the vaccine or in those exposed to shedding. For example, parents changing the vaccinated infant's diapers. And last but not least, the OPV cannot be given to patients with immunodeficiency. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe. Hit the like button and leave a comment on the comment section. Until next time.